Stars typically form together in large molecular clouds that start to collapse, or parts of these collapse, and then the stars form inside these molecular clouds. Around some of these stars, also circumstellar disks or protoplanetary disks start to form. Now, the age of these stars, that all form more or less together, can be measured in such a stellar cluster, and the mean age is shown here on the x-axis. It's also possible to um, observe the circumstellar disks, and these disks have an infrared excess. And the fraction of the infrared excess of these disks can be used, or is a measure, for how much of this disk is still present. And this is what is shown here on the y-axis. Now there's a very interesting correlation here, and that is that with increasing age, so age increases here towards uh, the right, the fraction of the infrared excess is decreasing, or while well, the fraction of the circumstellar disk is decreasing. So with increasing age, the stellar disk dissipates, and after about something like maybe 10 plus minus 3 million years, or something like that roughly, um, the disk completely dissipated. So that is quite an, quite an interesting correlation, quite an important correlation here, that there seems to be a certain lifetime for these kind of protoplanetary disks. Now, very interestingly, in our own solar system from the meteorites, we know that, for example, chondrules form within the first five million years, and there are no, there's no chondral formation after that. The planets start to form after a few million years, and then this continues, of course, for tens of millions of years. But after the first few million years, three to five to ten million years, the first planets like Jupiter or Mars formed. This means that um, chondrules, which are thought to have formed in the protoplanetary disk, um, don't form after about five million years, which means that our protoplanetary disk of our solar system probably also had a lifetime of five to something millions of years. And this is in very nice accordance to what is observed here from these other protoplanetary disks. So the conclusion from this first, of course, that um, protoplanetary disks have a certain lifetime of maybe 10 million years, and our solar system is similar to this. So our solar system seems to be representative of the evolution of protoplanetary disks in general. This means, first, that our solar system is not special, we are not something um, extraordinary or something like that. And second, that we look at our solar system, we can learn a lot about formation of solar systems and planetary systems in general. And this is the important inclusion, a conclusion from this uh, plot of the lifetimes of protoplanetary disks.